Welcome to Biological Sciences at the University of Maryland. First, congratulations. Acceptance to the University of Maryland is a big deal, and you should be really proud of yourself. University of Maryland is a premier public research institution in the United States. The life sciences have been at the forefront of all the sciences for nearly 70 years since Watson and Crick published their double helical structure of DNA. The more recent emergence of COVID-19 and the novel coronavirus reminds us all of the value of a University of Maryland biological sciences education and reminds us that our students in healthcare, health policy, biomedical research, and education are doing so much for the citizens of Maryland and the United States to help keep us all safe in the face of this pandemic. BSCI.umd.edu is going to be your one-stop spot for learning everything you need to know about biological sciences at the University of Maryland. You can learn about advising and academics and research and internships and uh, all the things that you need to know to be a solid biological sciences student here at the university. Biological sciences at the university extends from molecular interactions to cellular interactions to all the interactions that create multicellular organisms and to the organisms themselves and their interaction with the environment. Essentially, we study everything from molecules to ecosystems and we include the global climate in biological sciences. The biological sciences program comprises three departments and over 100 research faculty. There is the biology department, the department of cell biology and molecular genetics, and the department of entomology. Together, these three departments and their faculty work together to create a coherent major of biological sciences. As a student, you will take courses taught by faculty in all three departments, their departmental affiliation will essentially be invisible to you. You won't actually notice this because it's such a highly integrated program. Within our biological sciences program, there are five different pathways for students to achieve a degree. There's the most general broadest program called general biology, and then there are a number of specializations, cell biology and genetics, ecology and evolution, microbiology, physiology and neurobiology. If any of these don't meet your needs, students can actually create an individual program by combining courses within the biological sciences with, pro with courses outside of, of our college and our departments uh, to create an individual major. All of our specializations have the same core of introductory biology, math, chemistry, and physics classes, but differ in their upper level classes. To get a description of all the specializations, to get a list of all the courses that are part of these specializations, and to get model four-year plans for how you can achieve a degree, check out bsci.umd.edu slash major requirements. Here is a curriculum sheet for general biology, our most general program. We see on the, this page the basic program and a series of supporting courses. These courses are the same for all five specializations. They include principles of ecology and evolution with lab, principles of molecular and cellular biology with lab, principles of biology uh, three, which is an organismal diversity course, and principles of genetics. Those courses are required. There are additional there are, in addition, some supporting courses, two semesters of math, four semesters of chemistry with lab, and two semesters of physics with lab. Once you've made substantial progress along these basic and supporting courses, you can move to the upper level biological sciences courses. This is a partial picture of the list of courses available at the upper level for general biology. There are over 80 courses in uh, biological sciences at the upper level that we regularly offer at the University of Maryland. We can't actually get them all on one page for you to see, so I'm going to take this 
slice in a uh, of, of the picture so that you can see uh, some of the courses that we offer. Upper level courses in biochemistry and math and statistics, a group of courses in genetics and evolution, a group of courses in cell biology and development, and a group of courses in ecology, behavior, and organismal biology. So literally, you can take a course on the natural history of the Chesapeake Bay. You can take a course in microbial uh, genetics or a course in cell biology and physiology. Uh, the the wide courses are wide ranging and with general biology you have your widest possible selection of courses. It's so, it seems so daunting. Who will help you through all of this? Well, every student will have an academic advisor. For the first two to four semesters, you'll have a professional advisor in the college student services office who is trained to work with students like you transitioning from the university from high school. In your final four to six semesters, you'll be assigned a faculty advisor in one of the three biological sciences departments who will help you develop your professional plan and get you ready for the next steps. Who teaches your classes? All of your biology, chemistry, and physics classes will be taught by PhD holding faculty. We do not have graduate students teaching courses. We do not have postdoctoral fellows teaching courses. They are all taught by PhD holding faculty. Many of our courses are broken down into laboratories and discussions, which will be led by graduate students and in some cases, undergraduate students. A question that we always get are how big are the classes? Well, the classes range from fewer than 20 students to more than 250 students. Many of our introductory courses are large but they do get smaller as you progress through the program. Now, many of you might be intimidated by this number. Large classes is something you're not used to. You're used to high school classes, which may have 30 or 35 at the most. 250 seems awfully intimidating. But honestly, there are ways around the size issue that make you feel comfortable. Strategies as simple as sitting up near the front of the class so you don't actually know what's going on behind you. And something that's little thought of is that for those of you thinking about medical school and dental school, those classes typically have between 100 and 150 people in them. Our students go into these programs and they know how to be successful in that environment and they're successful from day one. Students who go to school with small, more intimate classes may have some advantage over the larger classes, but not once they get to medical school or dental school. All of our larger classes are broken down into smaller weekly laboratory or discussion sections, typically no more than 24 students. And many instructors break the lecture classes down into smaller groups for hands-on active learning demos and modules. So even if you're in a large class, you'll often be broken into smaller groups to try and uh, initiate uh, more active learning. Does UMD accept prior learning credit? Absolutely. UMD is very generous, accepting many advanced placement and IB international baccalaureate credits. Here's the website for to get the information on all of the tests that you might be taking. Generally, a four or a five on the AP exam, or a five, six, or seven on the high level IB exam earns credits. UMD also accepts dual enrollment and community college credits, and here is a website that can give you all of the information about how those credits will be applied to your degree. A question that we get all the time is, should we retake biology or math classes that I earned AP credit for? And generally the answer is no. You're the final arbiter of that decision. It's going to depend to some extent on how you feel about your experience in that AP course. But generally, the answer is no. We have data from many years that says that first year students coming to Maryland with AP credit for biology, calculus, chemistry, are ready to take the next classes and be successful in those classes. About 50% of our students come in with advanced placement credits and they generally end up being at the upper end of the grade distribution in the next class. So using AP credits gets you to more advanced classes sooner and frees you up to study abroad at a double major or a minor, get more involved in research, or do other engaging activities that are going to enhance your future prospects. 
such as research and internships. Our three departments have dozens of faculty labs that accept undergraduates as colleagues and research assistants. You can check out these departments at cmns.umd.edu. And if you're interested in research, and we encourage all of our students to at least taste research, we encourage people to get in as early as possible, generally within the first couple of years. One of the great things about biology is that it's available in other departments outside of the Department of Biology and the Department of Cell Biology, etc. You can find biology research all over campus in animal sciences, bioengineering, electrical engineering, kinesiology, nutrition and food science, physics, and psychology. Additionally, there are labs all over the Baltimore-Washington metro region in various universities such as Georgetown and GW and Johns Hopkins and University of Maryland Medical School, as well as federal research labs, National Institutes of Health, National Institutes of Standards and Technology, the Food and Drug Administration, the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, and the Smithsonian Institution. Students go into these programs and are highly successful. And what can you do with a degree from UMD? Most of our students come in interested in careers in health, medicine, dentistry, nursing, physician assistant, optometry, physical therapy, sports training, etc. All biological sciences specializations strongly prepare students pursuing the health professions. Our system of uh, required and supporting courses, as well as many of our upper level courses, complete all of the prerequisites for all of these programs. So you don't need to go outside of the major in most cases to complete all of the requirements to get into these schools. There is a Health Professions Advising Office, the HPAO, uh, that has all the details. I've given you the website here, and they have also created a recruitment presentation that you should view you'll see that Maryland ranks very highly among its peers in terms of the numbers of students, the percentage of students that get into professional school. Other popular careers include research, teaching, law, especially environmental law and intellectual property law, and business. Essentially, a degree in biological sciences from the University of Maryland is highly sought after by employers because our students are flexible, our students have uh, critical thinking skills, they have problem solving skills, and they're used to working in groups together. All kinds of things that employers are looking for. How easy is it to study abroad? It is really easy. There are programs for everyone. There are semester long programs, year long programs, summer programs, and for those of you who don't seem to think that you can fit in any of these programs, there are short term programs of one week, two weeks, three weeks that can fit into spring break or fit into the January term between fall and uh, spring semesters. Talk with your advisor about the best time to go abroad for you and your future. I've presented the website here for the Study Abroad Office that gives you all kinds of information about the, the literally hundreds of programs you can choose from. How does biological sciences being a limited enrollment program affect me? Well, it might be a limited enrollment program, but it is not a limitation. Students are either directly admitted to the biological sciences program or transfer in after taking a series of gateway classes. Gateway classes are exactly the same classes taught by exactly the same faculty taken by the directly admitted students. If you are successful in those classes, you will be automatically taken into the major when you've completed those classes, which usually takes uh, two, to four, two to three semesters. Students not directly admitted graduate with exactly the same GPA, average GPA, and within the same time as direct admits. So there is no harm in changing your major into biological sciences and not getting, direct, or not getting directly admitted. Many of you might have been invited to join a living learning program. Is this a good idea? Absolutely. 
the Honors College, College Park Scholars, Carillion Communities, and all the other living learning programs on campus provide amazing opportunities to meet like-minded people and connect with dedicated faculty and staff interested in promoting your success. It is a tremendous opportunity, and I encourage you to not miss out. Are there other opportunities? Opportunities are unlimited at the University of Maryland. And let me give you a hint. That's why you come to the University of Maryland, because the opportunities are unlimited. They are limited only by you. There are more than 400 student-led organizations. You can engage in high-level, cutting-edge research with top-level research scientists uh, internationally recognized. You can teach labs and discussions. You can gain clinical experience in local hospitals and clinics. And you can pursue science or health policy or uh, writing fellowships in government agencies and non-government organizations in Washington, D.C. through the Global Fellows Program or the Federal Semester Program. If you have any questions, you should contact one of the undergraduate directors for the biological sciences. In biology, it's Dr. Reed Compton, and the biology program administers the ecology and evolution specialization and the physiology and neurobiology specialization. In cell biology and molecular genetics, it's Dr. David Straney. Cell biology and molecular genetics administers the cell biology and genetics specialization and microbiology. And if you're interested in general biology, you should speak with Dr. Brett Kent in the Department of Entomology. There is no better time to be a BSCI Terp, and we hope to see every one of you here in the fall.